Geographically, our area of North Texas is a part of the cross timbers and prairies. Before the arrival of the first settlers in the mid to late 1840s, it was often a temporary stop for nomadic bands of Indians. Temporary because it had a limited supply of the game animals necessary to feed and clothe the Indians. And it had no sources of flint, a stone necessary for making weapons and tools. But the availability of water made it a useful stopping place for the Indians as they migrated from one area to another. By the early 1850s, several small settlements or communities consisting of family units had been established in the general area. The first settlers to our area were of Scottish and Irish descent. The Bloodworth School was located at what is now the intersection of Highway 1187 and Gertie Barrett Road, and that building survives today as a church. The Lone Star School, shown here in the process of moving, was located south of Mansfield, just off Business 287 and FM Road 157. There were several other communities in the area that you may know, such as Gibson, Webb, Gertie, and Bisbee, just to name a few. Many of these communities had their own schools, churches, and graveyards. In 1856, Mr. Ralph S. Mann and Mr. Julian Field came to our area. Between 1856 and 1859, they constructed a grist mill on land that is now the southeast corner of East Broad Street and South Main Street. Mr. Field purchased a 540-acre tract of land across from the mill where he built and operated a general merchandising store. He also built a log cabin near the store which served as lodging for the mill customers and other travelers. By 1860, the nucleus of the community had formed around the mill location. It was being referred to as Mansfield, spelled with an F E I L D. During the Civil War, the Man and Field Mill supplied meal and flour to the Confederate Army. Meal and flour produced by the mill was delivered by ox drawn wagons as far east as Shreveport, Louisiana, and as far north as Jefferson, Missouri. Our small community was unique during this time in that it prospered while surrounding communities experienced a downturn in growth. Around this time, Mansfield changed the spelling of the field in Mansfield from the German spelling to the English spelling of field. The story goes that after the first post office opened in 1860, people sending letters kept spelling the name with F-I-E-L-D so the town finally changed the spelling of the name. In 1867, the city fathers invited the Reverend Dr. John Collier, a Presbyterian minister, to come to Mansfield and establish an educational facility for the community. Dr. Collier agreed, but insisted that the city meet two requirements. First, that the city be platted and registered with the county clerk's office, and second, that Dr. Collier and his family be provided with housing. Having Mansfield platted and registered would give it a sense of permanence for his school, and so that was completed in 1870. That same year, Reverend Collier opened the Mansfield Male Female College on the site of the current Mansfield Independent School District Administration Office. By 1877, the college was recognized as the finest source in the entire state for gaining an education. In 1878, 
Dr. Collier built a large two-story house on the western edge of the college campus. His family occupied the lower floor while the upper floor was used to house female teachers and students. Today this house is occupied by the Blessing Funeral Home at 401 East Elm Street. With its stable economic base, newly established fame as a seat of learning and the land survey, which facilitated the selling of parcels, Mansfield enjoyed steady growth over the next 10 years. There was a large influx of families from Tennessee, Georgia, and Mississippi, many of whom were fleeing reconstruction in the South and sought relief through a new start in Texas. From 1880 to 1890, the population grew from 249 to over 400. The defining event of the 1880s was the arrival of the railroad. The newly formed Fort Worth and New Orleans Railroad built a depot in Mansfield in 1886 and our town was a regular stop for the train as it traveled between Fort Worth and Waxahachie. Teams of local men, known as section gangs, were responsible for maintaining links of track located near their homes. The railroad trestle shown here was completed in 1885 and renovated in 1906. It is the longest surviving railroad trestle in Tarrant County. The first church constructed in Mansfield was the Cumberland Presbyterian Church. It was built at the corner of Church Street, which is now North Walnut Creek Drive, and East Broad Street, approximately in right field of the current Geyer baseball field. The small house that you see immediately behind the church in the photo is the home of Miss Irma Nash an early Mansfield teacher. Mansfield was incorporated on August 23, 1890 with a population of 418. Steady growth continued during the following decade. Five churches were built, the first bank opened, and several cotton gins and the old grist mill were in operation. By 1900, the population of Mansfield stabilized at about 700. In 1904, the existing water lines were improved and expanded. In 1905, the first telephone lines were installed. About the same time, concrete and brick sidewalks were laid along Water Street, which is now called Main Street. After the male-female college closed in 1887, Mansfield never regained its exalted position as a seat of higher education. But the town did establish the Mansfield Independent School District in 1909 and remained a center of learning for Southeast Tarrant County. In 1917, Mr. Milton Mayfar came to Mansfield and built our first electric light plant. The plant location on Walnut Street is now a parking lot. Upon completion of the plant, he recognized the need for good clean entertainment in the city, so he rented a building on Water Street and opened the first movie theater. The far best theater featured Saturday afternoon kitty matinees, a movie on Friday night, and a matinee and night movie on Saturdays. The next major public improvement occurred in 1926 when the city installed a sewer system. The wastewater processing plant was located on the east side of Church Street, south of where it crossed Walnut Creek. Today, the North Soccer Field in Hardy Almond Park is on that location. 
the same year Mansfield got its first natural gas lines. Unfortunately, Mansfield did not retain the economic prominence that it had enjoyed in past years. Mansfield subsisted through the 1950s primarily as a marketing service and transportation center for the farms of southeast Tarrant County. By 1960, the population of Mansfield had increased to 1,375. It was a sleepy little town for a few more years, but then it started to grow again. A new industrial park enticed manufacturing businesses to the area, and by 1980 the population was 8,000. By the year 2000, the population of Mansfield had risen to 28,000. The good reputation of the MISD schools encouraged many families to move to within the school district. Mansfield also provided a relatively low cost of living and a central location for businesses and commuters within the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. By the year 2015, the population of Mansfield had exploded to over 60,000 people with a land area over 36 square miles. It had been recognized multiple times as one of the best places to live in America, one of the safest cities in Texas, and was described as an affluent suburban city. Throughout the year 2015, the city and its residents celebrated Mansfield 125, the 125th anniversary of the municipal incorporation of the city.